itu sebenarnya saya lah. <laughs> Besides study, because I came from a humble family, not so well off, so I want to earn some extra money. Here by my house, there is a sawmill. So obviously, not much of option that I have. During the school holiday, after from 3 and from 5, I do part time there. So, obviously, at that point of time, I don't know what are the so-called hearing loss prevention. And the sawmill employer also, they don't know about this, I guess. So, no PPE or whatsoever be provided. You know, in the sawmill, it's actually very noisy. And after I enter medical school, then I got the chance to test my hearing. And subsequently, I further my study in ENT. Obviously, I got more chance to test my hearing. And actually, I did suffer some degree of hearing loss. So, for all of you, I think you are very lucky. You are working at the reputable organization that provides this kind of awareness program for you. So please benefit this kind of opportunity to learn and see how you can benefit from this rather than you suffer like me. Uh, this is something like what Dr. Amin already mentioned is irreversible. You have to live with that once the damage already done. So what I try to do, I don't want to let you have the impression that hearing prevention means PPE. You don't walk away today and thought that hearing prevention is very simple. Just wear PPE. It's more complex like that. So I would like you to have a broader view of what are the hearing loss, what can cause hearing loss, and things like that. So what I'm trying to do today, I will tell you the anatomy of the ear how we hear from there, I will tell you what are the various type of hearing loss. Then, from the anatomy itself, we will go from external ear to middle ear and inner ear. Pro hopefully, that will cover majority of the hearing loss concern. And what are the aspects that we can prevent? This is the anatomy of the ear. So. From the tympanic membrane, eardrum outward, we consider this as external ear. And this is middle ear from eardrum to the inner wall of this, we call this middle ear. And this is the eardrum with three small bones that deliver the vibration and transmit the sound to the inner ear. And inner ear has two components. This is cochlea, we call it sensor for the hearing. And this is semi-circular canal for balancing. Just now one of the audience actually asked about balance disorder. Means this component actually affected. Okay, so clear? External ear, middle ear, and inner ear. And bear in mind, in the middle ear, there is a tube that connects to the nose. We call it eustachian tube. Eustachian tube. So, middle ear, there's a tube go to the nose. That's why ear and nose are linked together. So, type of hearing loss, we can divide it into conductive, meaning conduction having problem. So, the sound cannot reach the inner ear. Therefore, we can safely say that anything that affects the external and middle ear causes this conductive hearing loss. And sensory neuro means the sensor itself not functioning or the nerve itself. All these are inner ear and beyond causing the hearing loss. And sometimes can be a picture of this condition. And causes actually very, very wide. We can talk about Antenatal means during the pregnancy itself, there are some conditions actually cause the hearing loss in the baby. 
So it can be congenital, mean it runs in the family or non-congenital, maybe some infection during the pregnancy. Example, during the pregnancy, we don't encourage the pregnant lady to play with the cat. Because the cat actually has a disease called costoplasmosis. That can cause hearing problems. And during the perinatal, mean during the delivery, it's actually considered the most dangerous journey of our life. So, can be the baby born prematurely or during the birth, actually, baby blue, not enough of oxygen, we call aphasia or birth trauma, like post delivery, vacuum delivery, huh? and postnatal mean after birth. So, you can see that the causes actually very wide during birth, after birth, and after birth, one of it is noise induced. That I've been already explained to you. And another thing that we cannot avoid is degenerating. It's the commonest cause of hearing loss. Okay. So besides that, we have neonatal jaundice. Means uh, the baby becomes jaundice, gooding, baby gooding. Kalau terlalu tinggi dia boleh jadi aspek pendengaran. So some congenital disease. They only manifest after maybe teenage or even older. Some medicine or chemical can cause hearing loss. Infection like meningitis, meningitis can cause hearing loss. Um, hearing loss doesn't mean totally cannot hear. It depends. In medical term, we actually classify to mild, moderate, moderately severe, severe and profound. Depends on the degree of the hearing loss. And this is the average figure based on the audiogram. Um, probably you just have to have the idea of we can classify the hearing loss according to the severity and the, your compensation probably based on this. Um, and for, for us to understand sound, we need to know that sound actually have two components. One is the frequency, frequency it means actually the sound can have a loudness. So loudness we we measure it using decibel. Loudness, what is what are they? But at the same time, all the sound have different frequency, mean high pitch or low pitch. So example, birth actually. Very high pitch. Water running high, running water actually low pitch. In our daily communication, our consonant actually high pitch. S, F, S. All these are high pitch, high frequency. And power, O, E, U, all these are low pitch. So, what we heard actually combination of the sound. And the loudness determined by the decibel. Just now I understand that in Pinduru Port, certain area we have high uh, loud noise. Loud noise actually means decibel very high. Doesn't mean the frequency very high. Okay. And this is the classical audiogram. After we test each frequency, <coughs> then let's say I test this uh, here, left and right, at 25, 250 decibel, uh, frequent hertz, this particular people can hear at 0 decibel. 0 decibel doesn't mean no sound. Some people have super good hearing. They can have negative hearing. Negative 5 decibel. So this is just a measurement. It's uh, totally different from our arithmetic uh, 0 to 100 like that. Huh? So what can happen if a person has hearing loss? For adult, okay, see whether you have this or not. <coughs> or you notice that your parents actually on TV or radio loudly. Or they simply answer you. You ask A and the answer you got is for B question. And 
sometimes not responding to your call, or unable to understand conversation in noisy environment. So a lot of my patients say, say, doctor, sebenarnya saya boleh dengar. Kalau mereka berdepan macam ini boleh dengar. Tapi kalau dekat coffee shop, kalau dekat banquet, ramai orang cakap dekat. I know that they are telling, trying to talk to me. I heard something, but I don't know what they say. This is what classical explanation. They can hear the sound, but they cannot interpret the the word. And if you speak loudly, probably you have hearing loss also. These are the possible symptoms. Unless we do the audio brand, otherwise we cannot know how severe your hearing. But then. At the same time, we, we have children, we have grandchildren, we need to look after them. They don't complain. And then, we need to be observant. If, you, if they have no response to sound, or speech delay, then we need to test their hearing. And hearing loss leads to mutism. Meaning, if a child cannot hear, if we don't correct it early, subsequently they cannot talk. End up they use sign language. Sign language no longer acceptable in this modern world. All children with hearing loss, we try to get them to hear and make sure they can talk like it's normal so they can have equal chance as other individuals. So we need to pick up this kind of hearing loss early in order for them to be corrected and then they can speak like normal. Now, we start from external ear. You imagine we, we will gradually progress from external ear and go further in to the inner ear. Ear weight is one common cause of hearing loss. So how you deal with it? A lot of people like to use cotton buds. If you go to Five Star Hotel also, in the bathroom, they provide cotton bud for you. So, the best way to deal with ear wet is do nothing. You don't think, don't use cotton bud because when you push, actually, the wet go further in, end up compressed inside, totally blocked. So you have to look for me for a clear. And I do have some patients while they are enjoying the digging, suddenly someone hit on them, on them, especially children, and this can happen. So, earwax is a common cause. The best thing is do nothing. And otomycosis is fungus infection of the external ear. Our environment here are very humid, but lembab, lembab. So fungus, like cendawan, uh, they like to grow in the humid area. So this fungus can grow in our ear as well, especially those with diabetes, or maybe ladies with two dogs, uh, because it's covered up, so humid inside. And the best thing is, we should keep our ear dry. After shower, we clean and dry up. Don't let water go in. And if you have diabetes, you control your diabetes well. Then you have less chance of getting this fungus infection, so it won't cause you a hearing problem. So this one also <coughs> fungus, fungus actually quite good looking, but not something good to have. <coughs> quite itchy and painful. Now, I try to tell you something about middle year. Middle year, we have the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube, the function is to equalize the pressure in the middle year. So, I believe now everybody can fly. During the descent, we feel that we have ear block. Anybody have that kind of sensation or ear pain? All these are because of the eustachian tube dysfunction. The tube not functioning well, so causing the heat ear block, hearing loss. And in children, sometimes they cannot perform well in the school because they cannot hear very well in the school. 
And in Malaysia, we have a nose cancer called nasal pharyngeal carcinoma, or in short, NPC. It's very, very common cancer. Among ENT cancers, because ENT is a very wide area, nose, ear, throat, and so on. The commonest cancer is NPC. If you rank it among the Malaysia, Malaysian uh, male, it's number three. And just last week alone, I have one case diagnosed in Cebu and one in Bidulu. Just let you know how frequent it is. So, nasal pharyngeal carcinoma actually grow right behind the nose. And the symptom actually, one of it is hearing loss. And because this tumor can block the eustachian tube, therefore the tube cannot function well. Then water collect in the middle ear. Hence, have the conductive hearing loss. Okay. So now you know why nose can nose condition can cause ear problem. One of it is nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. And this is the endoscopic view. If I look from the external ear, we can see the eardrum. This is normal eardrum. It's actually transparent. And you can see some bubble here. Can you see? Means in the middle ear, supposed to be air view. Now there is water inside. And there is bubble. So air fluid level. And this one is effusion. In the middle ear, totally filled up with water. Therefore, obviously, this patient cannot hear very well. So one way to treat is to make a hole on the eardrum, put a plastic tube over there to ventilate the middle ear to drain the water. Then the patient can improve their hearing immediately. This is not so much of prevention, but more of the treatment. And sometimes we do see people with perforated eardrum. In the eardrum, they have a big hole because of previous infection. So on and off, they have ear to charge mucus coming out from the ear. This also can cause hearing loss because the sound transmission is supposed to be amplified by the eardrum. Now eardrum has a hole, so the mechanism becomes inefficient. You can see the hole. And then you can see the ossicle, the small bone inside. You can see from outside. So during shower, the water can come from external all the way until here. And on and off get infected. Therefore, they have ear discharge on and off. One way to treat this condition is to repair the eardrum. We can cover something from surrounding and then paint inside. Then middle ear trauma can be just now the eardrum perforation or ossicle dislocation. The three small bones can have dislocation also. What, how can it happen? It can be due to domestic violence, or road traffic accident, or some explosion. Okay, now we quickly move to inner ear. This is what probably the whole idea of this uh, awareness program is. Aging is inevitable. So everybody, after a certain time, like this graph actually illustrates very well. At 65 years, this particular people, person, have high frequency hearing loss. Mean high pitch sound, they cannot hear very well. Lower pitch, they can hear okay. So, what that mean? If they listen to a young lady, young lady normally their sound are high pitch. They cannot hear very well. If they listen to children, they cannot hear very well. Because children tend to talk in a higher pitch. Talk to men, okay. As the age pass by, after 25 years, the graph drops further. So, getting more problem. And high pitch actually not our usual communication range. Normally, we talk in 500 to 3,000 hertz, the frequency, normal human being. Um, but then, once the condition getting worse, then they start to have impairment. 
they have a distortion of the sound because whatever words that we communicate actually combine vowel and consonant. So they have distortion of the sound. They cannot really take what you say. They can hear the uh, consonant, but all the they can hear the vowel, but consonant cannot. So they really have to guess. They keep looking at your lip, see what you try to say. So they need the visual clue plus the hearing to guess what you are saying. But if you talk from behind, they really don't know what you are saying. This is the problem with the aging. Then this part probably Dr. Amin already mentioned very, very much in detail. So I just quickly go through this. Noise and sound, are they the same? Noise and sound. Noise basically is unwanted sound. And it has adverse effect to the health and well-being of individual or population. And there are two types of sound and noise at the steady stage, like in your aging room, aging room, or non-steady means the intermittent or impulsive, impulsive like howling, piang, piang. Intermittent, let's say you go back to your long house, you use chainsaw. Chainsaw actually have a con continuous sound. On and off, you start cutting, then the noise getting louder. So this is intermittent. We do have a lot of people from long house that hearing loss because imagine they build the house using chainsaw to cut the wood for the lock into plane and then make into house. So a lot of chainsaw being used. <coughs> so typically in the quiet environment, let's say in your bedroom, yeah, assuming it's plenty decibel. So in normal conversation, raise our voice roughly 60 decibel. Okay, you just have a rough figure. And then if you're cutting your grass, the machine costs 90 decibel. Grinding, 109 decibel. Chainsaw, 110 decibel. This figure, if you write rough idea how loud is loud, then when we should do the hearing test. So effect of noise, basically, uh, what we try to prevent is the auditory effect. It actually causes the inner ear hair cell damage normally at 4 kHz. Subsequently, it will widen. So, usually, it passes unnoticed initially unless we do the hearing test to pick up early changes. And just now, probably Dr. Ahmed mentioned this temporary pressure shift. You just temporarily get damage to the hearing. Means the threshold drop temporarily. Once we remove them from the noise exposure, sometimes they recover back. This is temporary loss. But if we, after some time, we normally, those with temporary threshold shift, they are compulsory to have another test done within three months by law. So if after retest still remain the same, means this is permanent threshold shift. Damage already done. They are scarring inside the inner ear. This is considered permanent. A permanent threshold shift. And those with hearing loss, sometimes they do come with tinnitus. They have humming sound in the ear. Can be very disturbing. Disturbing. Some even cannot sleep because of this noise. And noise induced hearing loss. And just to let you know, noise induced hearing loss doesn't mean occupational noise induced hearing loss. Because we do have workers after work that go back and play loud music, go clubbing and things like that. Those or even Chinese probably play firecracker, do you know Chinese New Year? All those are noise. Or you listen to MP3, now MP4. <coughs> <coughs> and then aging also. <coughs> So besides the hearing problem, noise also have a problem with affecting our <coughs> quality of life. That's why if you want to relax, you go to somewhere quiet to relax rather than noisy area. And also it can have psychological aspect. It can disturb your sleep, you cannot relax well. And if you cannot hear properly, 
imagine you drive in the middle of the road, you have hearing problem, and there is an ambulance behind you, you cannot hear the siren. Or during the fire, <coughs> you cannot hear the alarm. Also, that can constitute safety issue. So by law, at the end, we need to identify the noisy area. This is uh, for the manager. You need to identify, and then you need to identify who are the person requiring the exposed to the noise, and then you provide them audiology, audiometric test. And those with hearing beyond certain level, you need to do it annually. Those in between, you can do once in two years. And you have to put warning sign and then provide this. All this should be free of charge for the employee, provided by the employer. So for Malaysia, we actually adopt this level. Eight hours time weighted average of 90 decibel. Anyone exposed beyond this, you have to do hearing test every year. Anything between 85 to 90, you need to do the hearing test once in two years. Okay. So just now, now the manager is asking when to do. This is the answer. You have to do those more than 90 decibel exposure. They have to do every year. Once they detect abnormality, even though those between 85 to 90, once they have threshold shift from hearing loss, then they have to do annually. Those are the requirements. Now, if this is a normal person, after certain times, they have this kind of hearing loss. This is a typical picture of hearing loss due to noise. But usually, they dip at 4 kilohertz, and then affecting the rest. And this graph will go deeper and deeper, mean more and more death. And Dr. Amin already said this is one way traffic, like what I experienced, hopefully not affecting you. So we need to do prevention rather than cure. No cure is it actually. Uh, even uh, ENT surgeon cannot do much except we prescribe hearing aid. So hearing conservative program, uh, probably I just quickly rush through. Uh, noise monitoring, we need to map up the area with the significant noise, we need to put sign on that area, and then we can have an engineering control by confining the noisy area or build the noisy things somewhere further away from the crowd. That uh, engineering control, administrative control means we need some input commitment from the manager level. Maybe you, when you purchase certain things, you have the specification that we only buy some equipment that produce noise less than 85 decibel. Or we can remove some people who have hearing problems, we protect them somewhere else rather than keep subjecting them to the noise. Let's say a person who's supposed to look after the engine room and he has hearing problems. We need to find some other job for him to move away <coughs> from the noisy area. So prevent further damage. This really requires manager level input. And like today, this is good time for workers to have to, we can empower workers by knowledge. Uh, Dr. Amin already mentioned on this, and we can provide hearing protection device. So pre prevent hearing prevention. Doesn't stop here only. Actually, it's a very complex uh, process. And we need to do, have, do this periodic audiometric evaluation, some annually, some biannually, depends on the situation. This is the, something that you can adopt. And this one already shown. But you really need to wear it correctly. Don't be too stylish. Wear correctly. And earmuff actually not widely accepted in our part because our temperature are very hot. So earmuff actually 
not very comfortable. Furthermore, some people need to wear glass. So once you wear glass, ear muff actually, ear muff actually not so suitable because already have some leakage due to the uh, paper. And then now I just quickly tell you some uh, some medicine actually cause hearing loss. Medicine, antibiotic, anti malaria. Malaria quite common in Malaysia. Painkiller like Pongstan, so common. Some people just after sport injury from device from pharmacy. Aspirin, those with heart problem, commonly put on aspirin. Diuretic, those with heart problem also taking this for kidney problem. All these are very common drug. Obviously, chemo for patient with cancer also cause that. This condition, special condition, actually called dizziness. <coughs> Just now, uh, one of the audience asked about hearing loss and dizziness. It can be due to many disease. Many disease consists of three symptoms. People have spinning sensation, <coughs> ringing sound, humming sound in the ear, and hearing loss. Once we do the hearing test, the graph tends to be like this. Low frequency get affected. It's different from the noise induced by high frequency get affected. And this condition, if we don't prevent it from recurring, it can cause hearing loss. So this is something that we need to prevent. We can take long-term medication for that. And unilateral hearing loss. This, uh, I urge you to pay attention on this condition. Let's say you have one-sided hearing loss. One-sided. Can be suddenly or gradually. This is something that you really need to pay attention to. Uh, one condition, particularly called sudden sensory neural hearing loss. Suddenly. Typically, patient can tell me, oh, semalam pukul dua, tiba-tiba sebelah kanan tidak dengar. They can tell me specifically when it happened, how it happened suddenly, and if we check the, this is characteristic of this condition is sudden onset, drop of 30 decibel, and three frequency and above, and it actually caused by multiple different causes, which sometimes we cannot even differentiate which one is which. And if we treat them early, higher chance for them to recover the hearing. Even that also, we have this one-third rule. Means, if we treat them adequately, one-third will back to normal, another third recover partially, another third never recover. So this condition, we need to treat early in order for them to be the lucky one third. Otherwise, they become the unlucky one third, means one side hearing loss. And in the nerve of the inner ear, also they can have tumor, benign tumor, nerve tumor. This also can cause one side of hearing loss. Normally, this is gradual onset. Reduce hearing, humming sound, and sometimes slightly imbalance. Hearing aid is the solution for hearing loss once it occurs, including noise induced hearing loss. So, in summary, prevention better than cure. This is what I want to emphasize. We need to prevent for it to occur. And we need to be careful whenever we use any medication. The medicine itself can cause that. And this is the important part for industry. Avoid noise induced hearing loss. Don't understand unilateral hearing loss. Unilateral means more dangerous than bilateral. And early treatment gives you better prognosis. And hearing aid actually improves quality of life once it can be occurred. So I hope you can roughly get a bigger picture rather than just PPE. Hearing loss can be from external ear, middle ear, and also the inner ear problem. And each, we tackle it differently. So, uh, hopefully I did not rush too fast or make you sleepy. <laughs> Any question?
question was whether para paracetamol is safe for the hearing. Paracetamol is considered, in terms of painkiller, we have the hierarchy. Paracetamol is the lowest in the ranking. Then come to the Homestun, Celebrex, Corsia, and things like that. It's called insect group. This is the second ranking. Then go higher is opiate, like tramadol. Those are stronger, mild opiate. And go higher, like heroin, morphine. Those are higher level. <coughs> now, paracetamol is actually very safe. It's the safest painkiller, but it's mild. So sometimes, let's say you have a trauma, then you take paracetamol, doesn't work. So obviously you want to escalate, use a stronger painkiller. That's where the Pongstan celebrate is come in. Paracetamol don't cause any really loss. It's actually cause liver or sick. And cause even positive. But that also need to be very, very high dose. Last time when I was with government hospital, sometimes I had to attend patients with suicidal attempt. They take 30 tablets of paracetamol. But cannot die. <laughs> because not enough. So paracetamol very safe. Even you take 30 tablets, also okay. Second question why certain people have ear pain or reduced in hearing? during the flight. That depends on your eustachian tube function. So the eustachian tube function depends on the age. Because during the development, in the childhood, their head is smaller. The tube is more horizontal. So the function is not good. That's why during the descent, you can hear a lot of baby crying. Very messy. Even the parents also get very embarrassed. It's because the tube is very horizontal, not functioning very well. During the development, then the tube, our head also grow longer. So the tube getting more slanting, getting longer, and the function getting better. So age is a factor. Secondly, whether you have nose problem, let's say you have sinusitis or allergic nose, then the tube also not functioning very well. Then, or you have flu during the flight, before flight, then you have higher chance of ear pain during the flight itself. So you need to be treated before going or flight. You expect. Normally, those with the ear pain during the flight, we try to decongest their nose. Then we put some spray in the nose, put some tablet. I also have some special earplug for the flight. Then actually equalize the pressure better. Less chance of this occurring. Need to treat the nose and the tube function better. Traditionally, people tend to take ginkgo, ginkgo biloba, ginkgo biloba to reduce, to maintain. Ginkgo biloba actually improve blood circulation, traditionally. Uh, improve blood circulation, it actually enhances circulation in the brain as well. So, it's, uh, some study actually say it actually reduce dementia, means loss of memory when you grow old in dementia and reduce the humming sound in the ear, it probably can protect your hearing. But not very specific. So no particular food that is really good for your hearing.
Terima kasih ucapkan kepada Dr. Lee Siu Ching di atas pengisian dan perkongsian berkenaan dengan kering Rose Prevention yang kita hari ini. Jadi untuk itu, sedang hadirin tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati sekalian tanpa meningahkan cara kita pada pagi ini dipersilakan sekali lagi mengkumpul sekanan selamatan dan lain kita untuk buat polis berhad Cikgu Halipun untuk menyampaikan cinta mata Tadu penghargaan kepada Dr. Lee Kami sudi untuk bersama-sama dengan kita Pada pagi ini dibersihkan